Okay, hi guys, how's it going? So I thought I'd do a quick video which covers all of the uh, slow motion options or the high frame rate options on the Panasonic GH5. I've been using the GH5 for ages now and film in slow motion uh, most of the time to be honest with you so I'm pretty familiar with what's what works and what doesn't work. But I thought I'd put together a quick video which demonstrates um, each of the different frame rates and where the kind of quality uh, steps down here along the way. Um, so I set up a, little, a very simple little scene in my studio, a couple of studio lights, a little controls scene, uh, I focused on the little colour chart there um, and got a bunch of shots for you. So let's have, um, let's have a little talk about each of the options and what the pros and cons are. So if we start at the um, at the top of our um, our quality uh, record quality menu here, we have the um, the 50p, which is the 4K 150 50 megabits per second, uh, 50p in 8-bit. Now, first of all, let me just say I'm in PAL, so I work in PAL. So for you, if you're in NTSC, that's going to say 60p rather than 50p. But apart from that, the quality is you know pretty much identical. So don't be worried. Don't be worried about that if you're in NTSC and you you don't understand why this is different. Uh, in PAL, we work in 25p and our um, our dub double of that is 50p for the sort of high frame rate options, but you'll have 60p. So anyway, so that that quality is um, very very high. It, 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 there's zero. I, I would say there's pretty much zero quality loss between the standard 4K coming out of this camera and that. It really is that good. Um, it, just just use it. One of the benefits uh, of using the 50p rather than the VFR options, which is the in-camera slow motion options, is that it retains the audio. So let's, for for example, say you're filming something and you don't know whether you want to have a, a scene with audio and to play back at normal speed, uh, or that you might want to then decide later on that you want to have that section to be uh, slowed down in post. You then got that option and you've got the audio as well. So it's a really kind of like cover all bases um, option at a very, very high quality. Um, so I'd highly recommend that for any situation where you're not sure whether you want slow motion or not and you want to retain the audio. Um, it's only at 50p, which is if you're in a 25p part, uh, timeline like I am, it's going to give you a half speed slow motion and you'll have to physically stretch that clip in your timeline um, so it's twice as long, so it's playing back at 50% of the speed basically. So, but that's how you get your, your slow motion effect with that. So the next one down to uh, look at, if we go down to our... Uh, 4K 8-bit, uh, 100 megabits per second, 25p, that then gives you all of these um, variable frame rate options. Uh, and if we go into set that, we will see that our highest frame rate option is 60 frames per second. Uh, that's given us a 42% uh, slowdown in 25p. Uh, uh, you know, it'll play back at 25p at 42% of the, the actual speed of what it is in reality, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, now, I've compared the... 150 megabit 50p with the uh, the 60 uh, frames per second VFR, and yeah, you are getting less bit rates per frame in the VFR, but uh, it, unless you've got a very very complicated scene, um, like I film surfing quite a lot, which has lots of moving water, which eats into the bit rate. It's like fi filming falling snow or a crowd scene or something like that, where there's loads of movement and it's all ga it's all information that's um, that each frame is gobbling up. Now I would say, you know, there's a few circumstances where you may want to go go to the 50p rather than this because it's there's just so much going on in frame at the same time. Um, but in essence, it's it's still incredibly good quality, and I use that if I know that I'm definitely going to be wanting it to be slow motion. I'm not bothered about the, the audio. I use that variable uh, frame rate, um, hundred and. 100 megabits per second, 25B, 8 bit, time after time after time because it's that good, it's very reliable and it's just a lovely, lovely quality. So let's have a look at some other options. So we've got a couple other uh, high frame rate options. I'll quickly mention the the 10 bit options that you have in camera. Obviously, if you're going through HDMI to an external recorder, there is more options than this, but we're just going to focus on the in camera options at the moment. So that's all of your 4K options, but then if you come down to um, the full HD, we then have a couple of options here which are both in 10-bit. Uh, we have the All Intra 200 megabits per second Full HD 422 uh, and then when we have pretty much the same thing so it's Full HD 422 10-bit but then this is in long GOP 100 megabits per second. I've tested these both out and they both work really well. They're both only in 50p so to be honest with you I would always, pretty much always choose the 4K 50 over this. Uh, there's only a couple of reasons where you may want to choose this over the 4K. Uh, the internal 4K is that because it is 10 bit. So if you're working in uh, vlog and you're not worried about losing the resolution going down to full HD, 
uh, it, Vlog works much better in 10-bit in terms of, your, you know, or if you're really pushing the grade. There's a couple other reasons where you, you might want to use the 10-bit and the 422. Let's say you're, you're, you're trying to key, it, key something or you're working with green screen or something like that. Having that extra color information uh, will help with uh, certain types of shooting. Obviously, there's a lot less resolution. So, you know, it's pros and cons, but the color is very nice coming out of the 10-bit. So if the color, color and really pushing the colors in the grade is super important to you, you may want to drop down to the internal 10-bit 50p rather than using the 4K um, 50p 8-bit. Now, for me, I generally would always favor the 4K uh, 50p just because I'd rather have the extra resolution, uh, which gives you the extra extra edge de detail and all the other things, the other you know benefits that you have with that anyway and obviously you know you might be working to a 4k timeline as your final output in which case you're going to be want wanting to stay to 4k but those two options are worth considering because they do give you that 10 bit 422 option um, a note about the megabits here with all intra because every single frame in the recording is a keyframe it really does need those 200 megabits per second so c compare that to the 100 megabits per second long GOP uh, the long GOP is a more economical way of storing the data. So you might think that the 200 megabits per second is definitely going to be higher quality than the 100 megabits per second, but it doesn't quite work like that. There's just going to be some situations where um, it's, it's going to look better in, in long GOP and some situations where it's going to look better in in the all intra. With all intra, it's less work for your computer to, to process that because every single frame is a frame it doesn't have to do this sort of this temporal kind of uncompressing of, of the long GOP format uh, I don't want get, to get too technical about all this but yeah, bear in mind that the quality difference isn't really going to be that much between those two it's just a different way for the, the camera uh, to actually store the data basically and like I say your computer will find that all intra frames easier to deal with if you want a quick edit and, um, and all the rest of it even though the file size is technically twice as big um, anyway so let's move on so the next one we've got the vfr 50p but i never output 50p 50p at all ever i might shoot in 50p but i never output 50p so for me i just i don't even ever use that at all so i'd go down to the the standard 1080p uh, full hd um 8 bit 100 megabits per second 25p vfr so this is your next vfr option that you have which is in my opinion useful so, and in here, if we go into our VFR set, and now we have lots of options. So, we got our maximum kind of uh, frame right here, which is 180 frames per second, uh, and that is at playing back at 25p, so it's giving you a 14% uh, playback. Now, obviously, the higher the frame rate you go, the less bits, bit, you know, the less information, less amount of data you have per frame. Um, but what's worth noting about this is that the camera deals with different groups of these frame rates in a different way, and you even notice that in some of the some of the frame rates, it actually it's actually not as tall. It actually, it, it it line bins. It gets rid of some of the information in, in sort of chunks. Uh, let, let's not go into too much detail, but let me just put it this way to make it nice and simple. Basically, 180, 175, and 150. They're all at the lowest quality. They, the camera does something with the information in terms of um, you know, line binning. I, I don't know exactly what it's doing, but th those three pretty much share the same quality, which is the lowest quality. Now, I still use 180 because sometimes you really want the absolute you know, real, real slowdown effect, and it's great that it's got that. But you do get a fair amount of aliasing, and you do get a fair amount of more. If you get, and if you have any kind of like grid in the scene, uh, you know, it will really show up in in those um, those frame rates. So 150, 175, 180, those are like the worst ones. And then the next one, the next step up in quality is at 125. So now anything between 125 and 62 frames basically is a very, very similar quality level. Um, now, obviously, you know the higher higher the frame rate, there is less bit rate, so you will you will struggle for anything that is is bit rate heavy. Uh, but bear in mind that anything between sixty two and one hundred twenty five, the camera deals with all of those frame rates in pretty much the same way. So the quality is fairly consistent for that whole chunk. As soon as you get to fifty p in the VFR, sorry, 
50 frames per second, I should say, in the VFR. Anything from that app, I mean, obviously, I don't know who, the, who on earth would use some of these random, just slightly off kilter frame rates like 27, I don't know, but anything from 50 upwards is pretty much the same uh, quality. So, you know, there's a step up between 62 and 50. But again, if you're going to be shooting at 50 or even 60, 62, I would use the 4K option and not these VFR options. The only thing I'd really, you know, use these VFR options for is 125, because like I say, that's the sort of highest um, frame rate, which has a sort of before it drops down in quality. Or I'd use the 180, which is the highest frame rate it has option. You know, it's the, it's the least quality, but it's, it's the most slow down effect. So it really gives you that freezing time kind of feel. Um, so there you go. So that's kind of like all of the options uh, covered that I would consider using. So to recap, uh, the 4K 50p is brilliant and that keeps the audio for you. So it gives you more flexibility about how you want to uh, put it together. We have the... Um, we have the uh, the 4K VFR options, the 8-bit options. Uh, those are brilliant as well. Um, the, the, the 4K 60 coming out of this camera is really very, very, very good. You practically lose nothing. You practically lose hardly any quality, quality at all, so don't be afraid of going all the way up to 60 in the 4K. Um, and then you have the couple of sort of uh, curveballs, which are the... Um, the 50p 10-bit options. There is more 10-bit options if you're coming out of HDMI, but in camera, that's your main sort of uh, high frame rate options for 10-bit. And then pretty much the next one to consider is your, 10, your Full HD VFR options, which is right at the bottom of the list. Um, and like I say, the, the 180 to 150 are kind of like the worst. 125 to 62 are the next step up, the next step sort of difference in quality and then anything from 50 50 frames per second or up is more quality again but like i say i probably wouldn't use those i'll just use the the, uh, the 4k anyway guys i hope that was useful um yeah so here's a bunch of clips so you can see what i'm talking about and comparisons uh very boring little scene but it gives you an idea of what i'm talking about in terms of uh more and aliasing and sort of just just a, a crunchy kind of slightly soft look on the different um high the very high frame rates in between the 180 and 150 all the way down to 62. Okay guys, I hope that was useful. Um, peace out. One of my one take, not, one take wonders, as you can tell, I've not edited. Uh, but I hope, hope it was useful. And yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. Cheers.